the first matchup, Al, Oki against Crawford. Uh, I don't think they'll stay with that too long because they're both not expendable. They'll have to put an expendable pl ball player on Sam Oki because otherwise you'll foul out. Marquette has to have Chris Crawford in there, especially down the prime time at the end of the game. He is their true offensive weapon. Let's take a look at the injury report sponsored by the Sports Medicine Performance Center of St. Francis Hospital. Anthony Pieper with a dislocated left shoulder still is going to be out a couple of more weeks. Jared Levette suffered a slight concussion in practice a couple of days ago. He is expected to play a little bit later on tonight. And Bart Miller suffered a left ankle sprain yesterday at practice. He should be able to play a little bit later on. Mike Dean doing a fine job in his third year at Marquette, 51 up and 22 down. You know what I like about Mike? In the month of March, in the first two years, Al, the Marquette Golden Eagles are 10 and 4 in March. That's good. What happens, he comes into March like a lamb and goes out like a lion. <laughs> in the all-time series, Wisconsin leads 55 to 47, and they have won nine of the last 11. We're ready to go, and again, a pleasant, happy new year to you, everybody. The officials, Hightower, Hillary, and Higgins, and we're underway. The ball is grabbed by Abraham. It's a Marquette ball. The Golden Eagles are in their golden outfits tonight. The Badgers in their familiar red. Here's a pass to Cliff from Crawford, and Cliff bobbled it. Not a bad play, though, to start the game. Badgers started off with a matchup zone. Marquette starting off man-to-man. -man. NC Oriental bounces one over to Paul Grant. The Badgers are shooting as a team 44% from the field. Oki launches. Nothing but string music for Sam Oki. A dream come true for any coach. The first shot score from three-point land. Oki makes a steal at the other end. It is 3-0 Wisconsin. That was a three-pointer for Oki a minute ago. Now Grant in deep scores. And the Badgers have a quick five. And timeout called by Marquette. Mike Dean is irritated already. 55-second timeout. It's only a 20-second one, but he's not going to wait around. He's seen some mistakes in his defense, and he called that timeout to adjust them. Oki led his high school team, Cassville High in Wisconsin, to back-to-back -back state titles. He was the Big Ten Freshman of the Year last season. And watch Grant's work inside. Nice inside position. He tried to come over too, too slow with Shaw coming over from the weak side. So it's all Wisconsin in the first minute of the game. Five nothing Badgers. Hutchins guarded by Hensi Oriental. Hutchins had 17 on Friday night at Dayton in the Golden Eagles win. Crawford to Shaw for a slam. They found a slight weakness in the Badgers defense for the alley-oop. They tried it the first time with John Cliff, and this time successfully to Richard Shaw. Nice pass by Crawford. 5-2, Wisconsin leads. Here's Oki. Now to Dwayne Dwayne. 6-4 freshman out of Bloomington, Indiana. Oki posting Crawford. Cross court to Dwayne. Here's Oki again. Eight seconds on the shot. Dwayne a three. Perfect. A 23-footer for Dewaney Dewaney. So the Badgers a perfect three for three from the field. Here's a steal. Oriental picking Hutchins clean. Oriental has it stolen by Hutchins brilliantly. What a play by Hutchins. He tries a three. He's got it. Just set, put himself right into the ball game. Oriental had his number in the first game last year, so that steal back was big time for Aaron Hutchins. It's eight to five, Badgers. Good action at the outset here at the Bradley Center. Doherty, pump fake, drive, blocked by Abraham. He kept it alive to Shaw. Over to Hutchins, 50-foot pass to Crawford. Now the Golden Eagles will set up offensively. Shaw, foul line, knock it down. It's a one-point game. Grant does not want to come out and play short, but anybody in the foul line, you got to play defensively. It's only a 15-foot shot. Making his first two shots, will that make his ankle feel a little better, Al? Makes anybody's ankle feel better. 
Doherty misses, and a strong Abraham rebound. And he got rid of it before traveling to Crawford. Good play by Faisal. Faisal plays position because you can't play matchup with a seven-footer. Grant is seven-foot transfer from Boston College. Crawford put it on the floor and penetrated and was fouled by Sam Oakey. Interesting comment you made earlier that Oki and Crawford, both the top scorers for each team, are guarding each other, and you don't think that'll continue very long. It can't continue because uh, if Oakley picks up his second foul, they're going to sit him on the bench for the first half. And they might just stay for one foul, then they'll put an expendable person on, on both of them. We are three minutes into the ball game. It's 8-7 to seven, Wisconsin. Now Hutchins holding up a play sign, guarded by Oriental. And Crawford lost it out of bounds. An unforced error gives it back to the Badgers. Four turnovers suffered by Marquette. Well, how about the officiating in a, in a game that we expect will be defensive and rugged and, and low scoring? What, what role do the officials play in a game like they this? They play a more important role in it because they make fewer calls. And so the calls are more important. Here's Grant. Perfect shot by Paul Grant, a seven-foot senior from West Bloomfield, Michigan. He wanted to get closer to the home. That's why he said he transferred to Wisconsin. Now Cliff penetrates. Off-balance shot off the back rim. Oriental with a well-timed rebound. Ten to seven Badgers. I get the ball to Sam. Oakley, there it is. There's Oakey. Pass to Grant down low, triple team. Grant forced it, missed it. Good defense by Marquette. And Grant knocks it out of bounds. I think they called a foul on Grant. They did. They had to call a foul on Grant. He got caught out of position. And the foul was mainly out of frustration. He thought that shot should have went in. We've got a timeout at the Bradley Center. The Badgers lead by three. We'll come right back on New Year's Eve. One week from tonight, Al McGuire and I will be in Ames, Iowa for a tough game for Marquette. The Golden Eagles take on the Iowa State Cyclones. They've been in the top ten all season. Well, to be on the money, they're number five in the country. So they're, they're truly a potential Final Four team. So stay with us next week and enjoy the telecast. At the outset, are you surprised we've seen so much offense so far? Yeah, I thought it'd be more Mickey Mouse, more passing the ball, more working the clock down. But they both came out like heavyweight fighters and started the slug right off the top. <laughs> it's 10 to 7, Wisconsin. The Golden Eagles of Marquette have the ball. John Cliff played well the other night at Dayton, had seven points. Now Crawford. Crawford has not put up a shot yet. He will before too much longer. He won't get many shots because knowing Coach Bennett, that's his game plan is to just shut down Crawford. Because if you stop Crawford, Marquette shouldn't be able to beat you. Hutchins, a blind pass. It was a beauty, but it surprised Abel Joseph, and it went out of bounds. Great look by Hutchins, however. A mistake by Hutchins there. You shouldn't be doing any fanciness to Joseph. You know, you can do that stuff with Crawford and uh, uh, with other ball players, but uh, Joseph isn't that great offensively oriented. Dwayne, Dwayne gets rid of it to Sam Oki. Oki has three points so far. Here's Oriental back to Oki. Good defense by Jared Levette. Now the timer down to seven seconds and a foul called on Crawford overplaying that pass. That's his first. Got caught in the weak side that time had to overreact, reached in too deep. Watch him, he gets too, too far over on the left, see? He got caught on what I could call the weak side. Oriental open for a three. The Badgers are perfect from long range. They've hit all three of their long range missiles so far. It's a 20 second timeout and Mike Dean, I think, does not want to give up those open threes. Well, you got to give up something in this particular game, mainly because the, the baseline, I would say, for the Badgers is better than the baseline for the uh, Golden Eagles. But what you got to try to do, the one weakness that Wisconsin has that Marquette doesn't have is that their bench is not deep. When Marquette has a relatively deep bench, they go 9 tenth man. The Wisconsin Badgers are a perfect 3-0 on the road this season. That's very impressive. They beat Memphis in November in a game played in Ottawa, Canada. 
And then we talked about the win at Temple, and they also won at St. Bonaventure, Bob Lanier's old school, earlier in the month of December. Surprising thing about the game up in Canada, uh, they won, but they lost. They never got paid. <laughs> They didn't oh, get paid. No, the promoter uh, went up, uh, went south on them. <laughs> <laughs> it's funny, but I guess it's not funny no. if the athletic director. No, was, that's true. Supposedly it was fifty thousand dollars. Hutchins a little lean in. Oki a strong two-handed rebound. Thirteen to seven. Wisconsin leads by half a dozen. Marquette had to come up with a stopper right here. Doherty over to Oriental. Grant puts it up from outside. Wisconsin not missing at the outset. That's the third from outside for Grant. You don't expect a seven footer to go out the floor. Here's Mike Bargain for the Golden Eagles. Into Crawford, might have traveled. Nope, he had it knocked away and out of bounds. Vicel Abraham comes in for the Golden Eagles, replacing Abel Joseph. Badgers just dodged the bullet that time. It could have been a foul on Sam Oakley. Now Mike Bargain to make the inbound to Levette. Open from 17. A little long. Oki a weak side rebound. Oki up court to Grant. Good look by Oki. And a Ooh. nice driving move Ooh. by Grant. That was unbelievable from the size of, uh, of that young man. Grant's 7 feet, 245 pounds. Good, a lot of agility. Hutch, ha Hutch has to put the ball up. Excuse me, Pat. You got to penetrate. There, there's the penetration. That's what he has to do. Oh. Hutchins missed the little layup. Gets his own rebound. Oh. Scores. Oh. What a shot by Hutchins. We got to give a, a tip of the hat to Little General on that one. Even though he's not a big man, he's strong, Al. They tell me he can bench press 275 pounds. Dwayne Dwayne. Another good one. Wisconsin shooting the lights out in the first half. It's 20 to 9. The Badgers lead by 11. The only good feeling that Mike Dean could have that no team in the country could continue shooting at this percentage from that distance. It is early in the game. 12 minutes to play first half. Mike Bargan with a three. That's a big one. It's 20 to 12. Everyone thinking this uh, score was going to be in the 50s. I thought it'd be in the high 60s. But the way they're going now, you might be looking in the 70s. Oki down low. Sam Oki knocks nice. it down. A little seven footer off balance. Nice float shot. Future NBA player three years down the line. Bargain came off a pick. Bargain to an open Crawford. He was hammered by Oki. Nothing called. Hutchins. Good rebound by Abraham. Fresh clock. Marquette trying to stay in it. They're down by 10. Hutchins, good again. It's only a two-pointer. He's got seven. Marquette trails by eight. What a heart, that young guy. He's just a, the eye of a tiger. Here's Oki on top. Dwayne Dwayne lost the dribble, gets it back. Oriental to Oki, posting on the right side. Open is Doherty. He's got it. What shooting, Al? What, what is the percentage from outside, three-point land? What are they shooting? They were shooting 39%. What I meant for this game. They are five for five from three-point land. They lead by 11. And they're doing it against a good Marquette defensive team. Crawford had it knocked away by Oki, taken by Oriental. Hensi Oriental to Doherty. Grant is open. They finally missed one, and a rebound foul on Doherty. Doherty, yes. Doherty pushed off too obviously. The only ball player that hasn't really been in the game offensively is Doherty. Sean. We've got a timeout, 10.59 to play in the first half. The Red Hot Badgers lead the Golden Eagles by 11. I beg your pardon, is that at Southern Mississippi? Anyway, it's sponsored by Golden Guernsey Dairy. That game is right here. That's what I thought. It's right here at the Bradley Center this Saturday at 1 o'clock. On the other hand, the Big Ten starts for Wisconsin as they head to Minneapolis. They're going to fly out tonight and take on the 
Golden Gophers on Thursday night. Here's a turnover as Hutchins dribbled it off his foot. Two days from now, it's a very tough game for the Badgers to win up there. Clem Haskins has that club also, I believe, in the top 15 in the country. Yes. Yeah, a lot of good teams in the Big Ten this season with Michigan and Indiana. Bobby Knight's going to be tough. Iowa looks good. Illinois will be a tough conference. Oriental throws it out of bounds. He was trying to hit Mike Kosol Sharon, number 23 in the red jerseys. He's a sophomore from Adams, Wisconsin. It's 25 to 14. You see the front court points. Wisconsin dominating in that category. Crawford has not shot yet. He forced it a little bit, but he was double teamed and fouled, and Crawford will go to the line. In the last three games, you can see what the big boys have done for the Wisconsin Badgers. Well, there goes Grant after maybe the best nine minutes of his college career, hitting three shots from three ball area. Here's Crawford on the line. Chris to shoot a couple. He's hitting 83% of his free throws. Marquette as a team struggling at the line, hitting only about 62% for the year. Uh, if they want to do something in Conference USA, they got to improve that. They also got to improve it by the time they play next week against Iowa State. What is the lowest acceptable percentage for you? 70? Uh, would be 70%. Yeah, they, they come out with traps now. And they try to pin one somebody in the corners. There it is. Steal by Bargain. Nice play. A well-timed defensive reach by Mike Bargain. Up to Hutchins. Marquette trails by 10. Midway through the first half. Crawford for three. Shaw with the offensive rebound to Hutchins. In traffic. Beautiful Ooh, what a pass. pass. And a foul as Abraham went up for the jam. Great dish off by Aaron yeah. Hutchins. Softball pass underneath. Here goes Aaron up high. Drops it down low to the baseline. Foul. Abraham goes for a deuce. But he has to make both of them from the charity strike. Faisal shooting only 40% from the line, 8 for 20 this that, season. That was a little bad. He put a little trajectory. The other one's like a clothesline in a tenement in the Bronx. <laughs> I mean, you got to get a little trajectory on your shot. <laughs> nice visual, Al. I don't know how many people lived in the Bronx. Wisconsin leads by 9. Oki. Over to Doherty, back to Oriental, then to Coastal Sharon. Nice ball movement, excellent spacing. Good defense by Crawford. Oriental in the key a long time. Bargain, another steal. Marquette down by nine. Hutchins to Mike Bargain. Then to Shaw. Hutchins to Crawford. Crawford goes baseline on Oki. Leans in, misses, but he traveled first. Chris Crawford is thinking too much. Play the game, son. You're an excellent shooter. You're an athlete. Play the game. Every time he gets the ball, you can see thoughts going through his head of what to do. And any athlete that does that normally creates turnovers or never plays up to their capabilities. Let the game come to you. Get in the flow. Don't try to go to the game. Does that make sense? Sure it does. I thought it did in 1996. <laughs> <laughs> David Burkemper. Here comes a scramble again when they double team the ball every time they can. Here comes a double team. Other three men cut the outlet lanes off. Here comes a double team again. Here it comes. Too slow coming out, uh, Crawford. Gotta come out faster. Coastal Sharon hurried that jumper a little bit. Oki had a hand on the rebound, but it's taken by Marquette. Marquette down by nine. A 25-footer off the rim. Hutchins missing. I, I, I think you'll see Joe Dick Bennett call a timeout here if this defense works again. They just haven't analyzed it. His ball players haven't. He has on, obviously. Dwayne Dwayne. Another three. Wisconsin shooting brilliantly in the first half. That is their sixth three-pointer. So 18 of their 28 points are on the long-range shots. Eight minutes to play in the half. Need more movement offensively, Golden Eagles. 
There's some confusion right now. Hutchins scoring. What a shot by Hutchins. Uh, Aaron's going to have to put the team on his shoulder and carry them, and those shoulders are broad enough to do it. He's got nine points. Marquette down by ten. Dwayne, Dwayne, right around Shaw. Too hard on the soft jumper, and Dwayne on the other side gets it. Dwayne might be the best athlete out there as far as quickness and movement and playground basketball. Dwayne, Dwayne missed that one. And a rebound to Abraham. Then to Hutchins. Big basket here. Chris Crawford has to move more. Hutchins missing a little 14-footer. He wanted that one. Dick Bennett wants a little bit more movement, a little bit more patience on the offense. You can almost see the team start to slow down a little. Oki on the baseline left. A left-handed shot, no good, but he was fouled. A good left-handed shot. He uses inside arm to clear the way against uh, Abraham. Good move. Watch this man trial go in. See the inside hand clearing? Foul could have been called either way. Yeah, he almost wiped away the defender with that free hand. You call that a swim stroke. He's extremely strong, and obviously someday we'll be playing in the NBA. Shaw gets a breather. Marquette trails by 10. Seven minutes to play first half. Marquette very tough at home. They had a 20-game home winning streak snapped here against Princeton a couple of weeks ago in the finals of the first bank classic. Well, you lose to the princes of the world when you don't beat them in the first five minutes of the game. You allow Princeton to hang around, they'll start driving you crazy, and, uh, uh, and you better be hot in the last five minutes, and Marquette was, and that's how come they lost the class. Princeton, uh, they gave North Carolina all they could handle before North Carolina prevailed a couple of weeks ago. And I just saw Princeton beat somebody like UTEP on the road the other night. So they're, they're a tough club. We've got a timeout. With seven minutes to play first half, Marquette trails 29 to 18, and we'll be right back. Check out the latest Golden Eagle stats and info on the internet at www.gomarquette.edu. Powered by Professional Control Corporation, leading edge solutions for business and manufacturing. With Al McGuire, it's Pat Hughes at the fabulous Bradley Center in downtown Milwaukee. Just under seven minutes to play. You can see how the Badgers have done on New Year's Eve ball games in the past. Here's Crawford muscling it in. Nice move. His first bucket, Al. Well, they're taking advantage of the only ball play with two personal fouls uh, uh, on either team is Grant. And Grant's sitting on the hardwood with the Badgers. So they'll take advantage of that situation. What does that mean to a guy, a big scorer like Crawford, to get his first basket? Oh, he's off the race. It gives him confidence and allows him to miss a few more shots. <laughs> <laughs> they got to play up, belly up to uh, the long shots now. Four different guys from the Badgers have hit from three-point land. 2022, O'Keefe and uh, Oriental and Doherty. Coso Sharon, a high-arching rainbow. No good. It bounced off the shot clock atop the backboard. So that's out of play. And it's only a nine-point lead. I guess Marquette has to feel kind of good, Al, as well as Wisconsin has shot the ball to be down by only nine. Yes, and an opportunity here to get a little bit lower. I think they should get the ball to JC. That means just a clip right now. This is Barton Miller. He's got a little bit of a bum ankle that he twisted in practice yesterday. Crawford open, he will put it up, no good, but he was fouled by Oki, and that's his second foul. Well, he come out, he should automatically come out. Uh, I think I know Dick Bennett well enough. Uh, if they keep him in, they'll bury him inside the zone. That will force the Badgers into the zone. But I, I, I doubt whether they'll leave him out there. You know, with a uh, nine-point lead, maybe just a seven-point lead, with just under six minutes to go. When you coached Al, would you almost always pull a guy after his second foul in the first half? Yeah, I, first of all, I wouldn't have him commit the second foul in the first half. Uh, I think there's expendable plays that commit fouls, and you must appease the subconscious of the zebras out there, the referees, and allow certain expendable plays to go out and commit fouls. So they won't call them on your stars. 
So in other words, let the referees feel like they're doing their job. Oh yeah, oh yeah, always, always, they're the boys. They're always gonna appease your boys. You know, you gotta make believe that they're, that they're right and so on and so forth. Did you have nice peaceful discussions like this with officials when you coached? No, officials really did like me, and I liked them, but uh, I was none negotiable. Here comes that trap again, that double trap. Ooh, they were fortunate to solve that. It's they, a seven-point game, Al. They're trying to make a quick turn over here. Watch this. Every place the ball go will be a double trap, and they cut out the three lanes. There it is. Saved by the Badgers again. Shot clock's at 17. There's a double trap again. Uh-uh. And a foul Good. on the play called against Marcus West. Good call by Hightower. Good call. It's two men thrown a two-man zone trap. There's a zone trap, and there's the foul there. But after three or four tries, finally, uh, Marquette did turn it over, but it didn't count. They get a fresh clock. It's only the third team foul on Marquette. The Badgers have been whistled for six. Five minutes to play first half. Wisconsin leads by seven. And Crawford blocked the shot of Booker Coleman. And this one's out of bounds and a foul on Cliff. Coleman will be on the line. Nice block shot here. Crawford gets up decent with him. Gets all leather. But he gets the ball back. Now Crawford can't try again because if he does the whistle, it will automatically blow, which it did. And they called it on J.C. Freshman play. John Cliff whistled for the foul. That's the fourth team foul on the Golden Eagles. And Booker Coleman, a 6'9 junior from Erie, Pennsylvania, puts in the first one. No, he's not a productive player as far as scoring, so he's fortunate to make the first. If he makes the second, it's a, a happy new year. <laughs> he can, he's improved his running. Coach Bennett has improved his running, but he, he's not an offensive weapon. No happy new year. He clanks the second. But it's an eight-point lead for Wisconsin. Now, this is the key basket, or we'll get to the foul, one or the other. Open is Marcus West. See, with West and Aaron in there, they can really pressure because those two guys are so quick. And two of the baseline men are in two fouls and sitting on the bench for the Badgers. Miller is fouled. That's the seventh against Wisconsin. It'll be a free throw for Bart Miller, a one and one. It's a one and one. Miller's been having problems making his foul shots. He shouldn't be the kid from Kentucky. If you're from Kentucky, you should be able to shoot from the outside and make foul shots. An obvious call is a slip there and a good, good whistle. Well, let's see what happens. Miller is two for 12 from the charity stripe this season. Oh, Coach Rupp is turning over in his grave. <laughs> hey, his uh, number of wins is uh, in jeopardy, talking about the legendary, the late Adolph Rupp. He won 876 games as a college coach. As Miller misses the first, a heartbreaker, and he will not get the second. But Dean Smith of North Carolina, if they can win 25 games this season, Dean Smith will pass Adolph Rupp. We should get it at the beginning of next year. Here is a shot by Duaney and a foul on the play against Hutchins, I believe. Or Abraham, one of the two. Abraham tries to hold his balance, but he, he, he bends in a little bit there. It is Abraham. Good body co uh, contact. Dwayne, Dwayne is a walk-on last year. He um, uh, was redshirt. He wasn't a walk-on. Last year he was redshirt. He's a pre-med student. What did you major in at St. John's? Space. <laughs> I could copy. I had professional vision. I was unbelievable. I thought I kept everybody happy. St. John's University did good, and I did good. So that's what we call an ease to push. As long as everybody wins, wins, fine. It's a win-win situation. It's a nine-point Wisconsin lead. Duaney has 11 first-half points. I go a little slow at this time and wait for Crawford to go down low. I take Coleman down low, Crawford. Coleman cannot guard you down low. Get the ball into the corner and feed from the corner. Just over four minutes to play in the first half. Crawford with a good look from straight away. A beautiful three-point bomb. You got to go to him. Coleman cannot guard him. He's got eight now. You've got to take advantage of those two key baseline men sitting on the bench for the Badgers. 
It's a seven-point Wisconsin lead. Oriental is playing a decent ball game. The Badgers have not been wide open from three in the last five or six minutes, the way they were earlier. Well, they don't have to double down because of the two great uh, baseline men, the two fouls each sitting out this half. Okay, which way did the Indians go? Everybody's pointing different ways. It's going to be a Marquette ball, I believe. It is. Mike says, I think that's the way the Indians did go. <laughs> We've got a timeout on the floor with three and a half minutes to play in the first half. Wisconsin leads the Golden Eagles by seven on this New Year's Eve. Development, Kathy Shaw. And that's on Ameritech's halftime report. Brought to you by Ameritech, your link to better communication. <laughs> she got cotton in the cheeks. Psychologically, a major basket right here. Now let's talk strategy now. The final three and a half minutes. Hutchins remarkably maintaining his dribble. Well, that took some athleticism. Well, I think uh, Dick Bennett would like to eat the clock up and get in with a seven-point lead where Marquette wants to uh, try to get the ball down low, take advantage of their stars sitting out, and try to get the game down to maybe three points. Crawford against Coleman. High-arching rainbow air ball. Taken by Oriental. Crawford thought he might have been fouled. Uh, it wasn't a good shot. Even if he was fouled, he shouldn't have uh, taken the shot. Open is Sean Doherty. Gives it out to Oriental. And work the clock down. Lots of movement away from the ball in Dick Bennett's offensive scheme. Here's a long shot in and out from Oriental. And a rebound to Marquette. West. Pulls up and fires. Oh, Mr. Soccer. When I first met this kid, he's playing soccer at Marquette University. A huge basket. The badge has got the answer. There's plenty of time left. What confidence he put that thing up with. It's only a four-point Badger lead. They led by 12 earlier. Nice spacing again by the Badgers. Good D by Marquette. Coleman against Shaw has a block and Ooh. a foul on the play. Shaw must have got him with the body. It looked clean upstairs. Well, Shaw got caught in his rear end, so he was in bad position. Coleman was trying to get close where he could dunk it. Again, I told you earlier, he's not noted for his offensive scoring. So let's watch this adventures, adventures in the foul line, see what happens. An awful lot of leather on that block by Shaw. Coleman has a couple. He's one for two from the line tonight. Just under two minutes to play first half. See, that time when he missed like that, now get off the, get off the, the line, come back and reset, get confident. Be confident this time, kids, confident. Looks pretty good. He has missed three out of four. Well, he's like Shaq. A lot of times you follow him on purpose. Marquette can cut it to two or maybe even one. Here's West. In and out. And the rebound to Coleman. Dick Bennett arguing with the official about a non-call a minute ago. Both coaches are being physical now, getting off the bench. Second half should be gangbusters. Minute and a half to play. Duaney might have traveled, and he lost it out of bounds anyway. You know, Al, for the last uh, seven or eight minutes, we've seen the kind of defense that I thought we would see all night long. Yes, both teams are playing, but don't forget that uh, right, Dick Bennett has those uh, Oakley and Grant sitting down, where Marquette only has uh, Abraham sitting down with two fouls. And Abraham's expendable as far as offensively, but not defensively. Right. Now Marquette down by four, just over a minute to play in the first half. Hutch has to, Hutch has to take charge right now. Nice Here's bounce. Crawford. Crawford scores! That ball appeared to slip out of his hand, but he still controlled it into the bucket. 
he's still not in a nice, gentle flow. Everything seems to be thinking. Listen to this crowd at the Bradley Center. Dwayne misses. West the rebound. Marquette down by two. I wouldn't play for one right here. I try to drive right in, right off the bat. That's what I try. Bingo. 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 Shaw tips it in. Richard Shaw tips it in. And the game is tied at 32. I would file intentionally Coleman right now. I take a chance. Good timeout by Dick Bennett. They are on their feet at the Bradley Center. Looks to me, Pat, about a little bit over 4,000, 14,000 and change. And they are vocally really rising to the occasion right now. Marquette basketball, as we watch Hutchins dish out to Crawford. Nice playmaking by Hutchins. Shaw gets inside position. The, the Maple Leaf, because he's from Canada, taps it up with two hands. <laughs> Is that the Canadian style of tipping it in? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's like ice in the puck. <laughs> Marquette basketball is brought to you in part by Hardee's, home of the Monster Burger. What will they think of next? Now, Marquette cannot give a foul because it put them in a one-on-one. -one. Marquette's committed six personal fouls. Badgers have committed seven. The arrow favors the Badgers. So you got all the information for you to coach in the last 17 seconds. Whoop. Whoop, oh, there it is. Lee him out. Steal up to West. One on one with Dwayne. Oh, what a Dwayne. nice block. Did they call a foul on him? Yeah, I think he did. pole vaulted on the inside hand. But I think they called a foul. But he pole vaulted with the inside hand. It was an excellent block. He's an unbelievable athletic player. Watch him. Watch the inside hand there. See that inside hand on the other shoulder? That is what the ref told you. And Marcus West will have two. The game is tied at 32. John Polanowski comes in to replace Crawford. You don't want to risk a foul on one of your key guys at the end of a half like this. I'd also, if he made the second foul on this one, I put pressure up court. There's only six and a half seconds left. You might get a gift turnover. As well as Wisconsin has shot in the first half, they now trail by one to Marquette. Well, you couldn't keep up the shooting if they had the first eight minutes. or five for five for three-point land. They were 71% from two-point. Marcus West knocks well, down a couple. They gamble putting the two kids in with the two fouls each. I think that's a gamble, but uh, obviously Dick Bennett knows what he's doing. Here's Oki penetrating. Launching his door and he missing at the buzzer. Uh-oh, there's a little pushing out there. Oki and Polanowski eyeballing each other. As the half comes to an end, what a comeback by Marquette. I'm going to tell you, Pat, the second half is going to be out of sight, so stay with us out there. It is going to be physical underneath, and I'll, I'll bet you the whistles will be blown from the opening tip to the final buzzer. Marquette leads by two, Al, after the Badgers led by 12 at one juncture. Our halftime show is coming up right after these words. Got him in his freshman year to the finals of the NIT, and last year we got him into the NCAA second round. The way Aaron Hutchin goes, so goes the Golden Eagles. Al, at the end of the first half, you mentioned the officials will call it very closely at the start of the second half because things got very physical in the final few seconds. So that's perhaps something we can watch. Yeah, I look very early here to, to see a, a call made underneath. Uh, it won't be a big effective one, just to show they're governing the game. All right, the Badgers in red. They've got the ball shooting to the bucket on our right. Doherty launches and gets to tie the game at 34. Pay too much attention that time to the other two big men, Oakley and Grant, and Doherty slipped out to the charity line and buried a 15-footer. Now Hutchins against Oriental's pressure gives it to Bargain. Shaw inside to Abraham, knocked away by Oriental on the double team. Nice double down by Oriental that time. He saved the basket. He comes from the weak side. Good pass. In comes Oriental. Into your screen right there. Save the deuce. Bargain takes the inbound pass. Wisconsin plays man-to-man -man even on the inbound play. 
uh, but they uh, they help from all angles. You'll, you, you'll notice the weak side of the court. See the weak side of the court? There's no Wisconsin ball players on the weak side of the court. The weak side of the ball is the side of the court the ball's not on. Crawford missed. Grant plucked the rebound. The game is tied. We're in the first minute of the second half. It is now a coach's game right now. It'll take a couple of minutes before it gets through to be a ball player's game. This is Sam Oki on top. He's got two fouls. NC Oriental with the shot clock down to 10. Doherty, a nice jump hook. A little shot put by Sean Doherty. And that creates a timeout because Doherty scored two baskets. Defensive win. It'll be a 20-second timeout. And they'll adjust Shore onto Doherty to say, hey, you must play this guy without the ball. Doherty is the sleepy quality of that baseline for the uh, fans. The Marquette Golden Eagles tonight are being brought to you in part by Golden Guernsey Dairy. Reach for the double G's. We've talked about the head coaches, Mike Dean and Dick Bennett, and the nice jobs that they do. They are both uh, very well assisted by assistant coaches for Marquette, Dan Thies, Bo Ellis, Mike Rice, and for Wisconsin, Brad Sutterberg, Sean Hood, and Brian Hecker. These guys put in long, long hours. Bo Ellis, of course, played on a couple of your great teams, Al, back in the uh, mid-70s. Went to two Final Fours as a freshman. Uh, I blew the game with technicals, and as a senior, we won it all in 1977. Bo was on both of those teams. Right. Marquette now down by two. Mike Bargan feeds Chris Crawford. Here's Hutchins. Hutchins will launch a three. He got the bottom of the net. And Marquette leads by one. Well, I guarantee this time down, Doherty doesn't score. Oh, no, they, they went to a different defense. Okay, they're on a different defense now. They're on that trap defense. Doherty missed. Rebound to Abraham. Up to Hutchins. Hutchins, a 60-foot pass to Shaw. Cross under missed. And the rebound to Oriental. Shaw played that one too soft. He should have gave a head and shoulder fake. Went back into his man. Good adjustment by the Badgers. Oki fouled by Crawford. And that'll frustrate Mike Dean because Oki wasn't really in a scoring position at the time of the foul. That's his second. To keep Crawford on uh, Oki is dangerous now. He comes out looking for a steal. Really got his feet in the way. Just not a good play. There's the trap. Doherty scores, lots of contact, nothing called. And Wisconsin leads by one. Hutchins will penetrate. He's very active tonight, and he missed a little 10-footer. And the rebound off Oriental out of bounds because Hutchins was chasing the ball. Aaron very much animated and very much into the action tonight. Well, the earlier in the season, the, even the problem of thinking of the sickle cell trace and then some kidney problems. But I think now he just said, hey, I'll do my thing and let Faith take care of everything. Bargain blocked by Grant and a foul on the play. Oh, it was a nice block by Grant. I didn't see the lower arm on Grant. Now, maybe the lower arm did catch him. I don't think so, but let's see. Up goes Grant. Yeah, the lower arm. See him move that lower arm? Not much. That would create a two-shot foul. That's the third foul on Grant. Um, now Dick Bennett has to make a decision. I'd, he probably will gamble for a while. Two for Mike Bargain here, Coach. <laughs> After the hard foul, he coolly puts in number one. Bargain, a sophomore out of Lincoln, Nebraska. Yes, father is an assistant coach for years under Danny Lee, the head coach at Nebraska. He now is in administration. He's seen the light. <laughs> <laughs> it's a 38-38 tie at the Bradley Center. As advertised, a great old rivalry renewed again tonight. Grant missed. Rebound to Bargain. Then to Hutchins. He's always got his head up looking. He feeds Shaw the trailer. Fades away and misses. Abraham missed, but he was fouled. Abraham should have finalized that one. He ends up getting inside position off the missed shot by Shaw. 
you, you'll catch on the replay here. Shaw will get the shot. He doesn't gather himself properly. But now Aaron comes over, I mean, uh, Abraham comes over to the strong side. He should have been able to put that back in. What Mike Dean tries to teach on that is that dunk the ball. That one, he leaned back in his foul shot. Abraham, you got to get a little trajectory and lean forward. No, nope, too low. It's still tied at 38. That foul a minute ago significantly was on Sam Oakey, and that's his third. We've got 16 and a half minutes to play. Was the third on Grant, but on Oakley? Yes. That oh. one just a minute ago was Oakey. Grant oh. had his third a few minutes ago. All right. Oriental just turned the ball over. John Polanowski has checked in for Marquette. John Polanowski is an active body. When he plays, there's always action. He was redshirted last year. We've got a foul away from the ball called against Abel Joseph. He was moving as he set a screen, perhaps. You'll see more of the screens called because the referees don't want this game out of hand. The Badgers are 7-1 this season and a perfect 3-0 on the road. Both teams have two personal fouls on them. Oki fake left, dribble right, feeds Doherty, knocks it down. A three-pointer from the right corner. Doherty has a dozen. The Badgers lead by three. Hutchins has it poked out of bounds by Hensi Oriental. And now time will be called with just under 16 minutes to play. The Badgers lead by three over Marquette. We'll be right back. Check out the latest Golden Eagle stats on the internet at www.gomarquette.edu powered by Professional Control Corporation, leading edge solutions for business and manufacturing. With Hall of Famer Al McGuire, it's Pat Hughes at the Bradley Center. We've got a good one for you tonight. The Badgers lead Marquette by three. Second half, just under 16 minutes to play. I'd get the ball to Crawford, try to pick up the fourth foul on Sam Oakley. Oakey and Grant both have three fouls. Let's see what Marquette does, coach. Crawford against Oakey. Crawford's in position now. Crawford took it to the hole, had it blocked, and now taken by Hensi Oriental. Oriental setting up a set play. Doherty has the hot hand. I try to get the ball into his hands if I was the Badgers. Oki looking inside. Open is Grant. The big man missed, and Crawford a well-timed rebound. Here's Polanowski. Got away with a walk. Almost an air ball as he was too strong on a 14-foot baseline jumper. 41-38, the Badgers lead the Golden Eagles. A little under 15 minutes left. Nice baseline move by Sam. Oki a little strong. You know, Oki hasn't really had all that many good looks tonight. They've done a good job on him. Here's Hutchins. Great offensive rebound by Abraham and a foul on one of the Badgers. Cole Solskjaer. Watch Abraham Sky here. Comes down, gives the Golden Eagles a fresh clock. Too much reaching in. Mike Kosol Sharon co committed the foul. That's, That's his first. Fourth on the team, only two on Marquette. Do we even need to say wire job tonight? Um, I don't know. If I, I, someone's going to bust out here, I believe. Think so? Yep. Here's Hutchins to the foul line. To Cliff. John Cliff, a true freshman out of Decatur, Illinois. In fact, John's celebrating his 19th birthday today. Crawford on the baseline against Oki. Oki caused him to miss the shot. Oki, you could tell, was playing it careful with three fouls. Now they're doubling down on Crawford once he gets the ball, and Oki's backing up a little bit, which is a good move. 
Open is Delaney for three. Another good one for the Badgers. Their eighth three-pointer of the night. Timeout, Marquette. Nope, no timeout. Check it. Need a basket big time right here. Marquette down by half a dozen. Hutchins inside to Abraham. Muscles it up, blocked. Blocked by Oki and a jump ball. Great play by Sam Oki. Arrow favors Marquette, so they get the ball back. Sam extended and blocked this shot at the top. That's playing to the top. Watch him get to the top. Right there. All leather. 13 and a half minutes to play. The Badgers lead the Golden Eagles by half a dozen. Bargain, a good look. Hutchins has the loose ball. Aaron off balance shot, no good. Oki made him change the trajectory a little bit. Badgers score here. You'll see, you'll see a change of tempo offensively and defensively if they score here. Coastal Sharon to Oriental, then to Oki. 21-footer off the front rim. Hutchins, a developing three-on-three -three to Shaw, the trailer. I would have taken that ball all the way. Aaron, you got to penetrate deeper, then kick off or go off, or go by on your own. Here's Shaw, top of the key, then to Hutchins. Crawford came off a pick, down the lane he goes to score. Big bucket for the Golden Eagles. Huge, because they could have been down eight rather than four. Badgers didn't score last time down. Badgers might be showing a little fatigue because they don't have that deep bench. Good timeout by Coach Bennett. They lead by four. Since they are a little thin, Al, in a game like this, do you think he'll uh, use almost all of his timeouts tonight? Uh, not unless he needs. It's one of these things. You, you, it's something you can't have. And you can't have your cake and eat it, too. You, okay. you want those timeouts at the end if you need it in a certain situation. But I think what he'll probably do is go to slider uh, defense or something like zones. Here comes uh, Crawford off of a high pick, a nice curl there, and all net. Crawford leads Marquette in scoring. He's got a dozen in the game. It's a Wisconsin ball on the resumption of play. Just over 12 minutes to play. We're now with West in the ball game along with Aaron Hutchins. These two guys that can't, neither one can be 5'9". That means there'll be more pressure defensively. Let's see what they set up. I look for traps with those two guys there. There they are. They're looking to attack somewhere. Not yet. Good ball movement by the Badgers. Excellent ball movement. There's it up. Reached the round. Joseph came around too much with the hand. That is team foul number four on Marquette. The foul on Mike Bargan. Or did they call it on Abel Joseph? Joseph. I think it was on Joseph. So both teams have three team fouls on them. Here's the pressure. Another Marquette foul called. Hutchins on the reach in, I believe. This is what I said earlier in the game. I think you're turning, seeing the game now turned into a fast whistle game rather than a slow. And the fast whistle game obviously favors the Big Ten team. Why would that be, Al? Um, be because Marquette has more ball plays, wants to play more physical. And uh, with the foul situation the way it is, Coastal Sharon was falling out of bounds as he tried to call a timeout, but he didn't call it in time. It's a turnover. Give it back to the Golden Eagles. 11.55 to play in the game. We'll be right back. Who's that? Brett Barr. Oh, Brett Barr. <laughs> yeah. Hey, you're a Packer fan. That, that should be uh, interesting when they play the 49ers this Saturday. Everybody's taking credit for their success, whether it's the managers and the coaches and the players. But the reason why they're successful is because of Bob Holland, their president. He leaves his ego in the car when he parks it going to the office. He's a fine gentleman. Yep. Hutchins missed, but Joseph puts it back up and it's foul. Oh, they, they don't call that foul on Grant. I think they call that foul. Watch this. They do not call it on Grant, I believe. The foul comes from the other side. Doherty apparently whistled for that foul. Each team with 
four team fouls. Audience, remember, Oakley and Grant have three each. Crawford has two. Look at the stars of both teams. Joseph badly off the mark. Al, did you ever have advice for a kid who really struggled at the foul line? Don't practice. Don't practice. Don't practice. Make it a make it like you're at the playground and your shirt's hanging out and you're drinking a soft pop and you're having a twinkie. And just get up there, relax, just put up and say, if it's supposed to go in, it's going to go in. <laughs> Told you, there just had is. Joseph do it. So don't practice. Don't practice. Well, that's a kid from Canada. He has to practice with ice skates. <laughs> All right, got ourselves a nice ball game. Marquette down by three, 11 and a half minutes to play. Sam Oakey of the Badgers. Remember I told you, two small guards from Marquette. Watch the turnovers and scrambles. Oakey forced it. Off the rim, no good, and a rebound to Bargain. Here's Marcus West bouncing one to Hutchins. Oh, I would have got it into Crawford to try to pick up that fourth on Oakley. That time Oakley was pushed by Crawford. Crawford got away with a defensive foul. The Golden Eagles down by three. Hutchins posting up Oriental as West bombs away and misses. And Oki a well-timed rebound. West didn't understand how tall Doherty is. Got kind of low in the game here. You get into the bell lap. The bell lap is the last four minutes of the game. The last ten minutes, excuse me, of the game. And that's something the first half all those shots within the second half none of them has gone into the bag Doherty missed it's a Marquette ball the Golden Eagles still down by a trio West back out to Hutchins and the Eagles will set up their offense 15 seconds Crawford posting up. He wants to shoot. Does. Misses. Air ball. Good defense by Oki. No foul. A year ago on New Year's Eve, the Badgers beat the Eagles 55-47. Open is Postal Sharon. Too hard. Weak side rebound to Marcus West. Each team having a tough time shooting right now. Well, it seems like the Badgers are waiting for the Golden Eagles. Hutchins will try to tie the game. He does! Missed the prime time. Hutchins has 15. And the game is tied at 44. Passing your seatbelt. This is going to be a great last nine minutes. Heavy screen and underneath. Doherty, left-hander, no good. Doherty gets his own rebound. Knocked away by West. And we've got a foul before the shot on Mike Bargan. No basket. Common foul. It's up low. Bargan ends up smartly fouled. It wasn't intentional, but it, it, it should have been intentional. They had inside position. That ends up being the 15 foul on Marquette. So they have one more to fool around with, and after that, it's one and one. Mike Dean keeping everybody fresh, brings back both Cliff and Abraham. So it's West, Hutchins, and Crawford, along with Abraham and Cliff right now. A tie game at the Bradley Center. Here's Grant. Missing, but he was fouled on the play. He's absolutely free underneath. All he has to do is gather himself and go up and dunk it. Nice move here. Oh, is that Cliff? Oh, no, that was West. Nice move by West there. You want that dunk now, Grant. You got to make two for the charity line. Eight and a half minutes to play. The game remains tied. Watch Grant's feet. He doesn't get his heels up. You've got to get your heels up after you shoot. They're up that time. That's why it's in. It's a one-point Badger lead. Nice 
Grace crowd at the Bradley Center tonight, and they've seen a good one. Tough man-to-man -to -man by the Badgers. I get the ball to Cliff. Hutchins pump fakes and scores! They will now try to turn over, get a run going. They'll try to turn over the Badgers to get a run going. Watch. Didn't get a double team yet. There, they got the hand on it. West knocked it out of bounds. It was Cliff who deflected the pass. This is a quick lineup Marquette has in there right now. Constantly basketball, especially colleges, runs. And pros also. But when you get a run started, you, you've got to extend it. Marquette was very fortunate at the end of the first half. I think they scored the last 16 to 17 points, didn't they, Pat? They yeah, scored them uh, 18 to 4 in the last 12 in a row, Al. Okie double team dribbles out of traffic. And oh, nice it play. In. Outstanding body move. He did, he did a disco move <laughs> in, in the air. He, he adjusted his body. Tie game at 47. Hutchins has nailed a couple of long-range shots in the last two minutes. Let's see if they try to get Aaron open again. Now, I wouldn't stay there, Bog, even though he has three. I'd move out there. That's the better place to move. He Crawford to move down low. Shot clock down to five. Bargain fades and scores! Tough shot! He had to put it up. The timer was running down. That's why last shots are made in games at halftime and so forth, because you're not worrying about the shot, you're worrying about the time. So you go through smoothly, you follow through. Here's pressure, the pressure I was telling you about, trying to double team. Good ball, ball, ball movement. They're spreading out the double team. Not staying, you gotta do it yourself. Delaney misses. And Doherty tapped it out of bounds. We've got a timeout at the Bradley Center. 6.44 to play. Marquette leading by a deuce. This Marquette basketball broadcast is brought to you in part by Ameritech, your link to better communication. Marquette has come back to lead by two with under seven minutes to play here at the Bradley Center. Thanks for joining us tonight. Al and I will be in Iowa a week from tonight as we cover the Marquette game at Iowa State. And we hope you can join us. In the meantime, Marquette plays at home this Saturday against Southern Mississippi. Our good friend Hank Raymonds is right behind us tonight, Al, one of your former assistants. Yeah, I was talking to him. He has one of these dogs at the racetrack. He's going to retire it. He said to me, would you like to adopt the dog? I said, Hank, I know a guy that owns a Chinese restaurant that would really fatten up this dog and do right by him. <laughs> what did he say? He, does. He, he never listened to me. <laughs> Why should he start now? Hudson's on the bench with a banged up shoulder. Here is Crawford oh. forcing one, but Bargain puts it in beautifully. Oh. Good anticipation by Mike Bargain. Lack of boxing out by the weak side baseline man for Wisconsin to get that chippy basket. You're into a chess game now. Six minutes starts the chess game. Coastal Sharon to Grant. Wow! wow. Abraham, but a foul Did he on go the play. up there? Wow, Abraham must be what, about 6'7, six, 6'8? Six, Grant's about seven foot. Watch him go up. Up, up and away, Superman. Good call by the ref. It's in the seventh, it's one and one. And if he wants to make the first one, this kid, Grant, he better get his heels off the floor on his foul shot. That's the third on Abraham as Grant makes the first, and it's a three-point game. Hutchins still being looked at by David Lee, the Marquette trainer, who does a fine job. That left shoulder appears to be banged up. He's got some ice on it, and he's in some pain right now. If there's any way to come back, he'll be back. Now Marquette leading by only two. Six minutes to play. Marquette has to stay aggressive now. They can't go into the tank and on cruise control. Abraham! Wow! Merry Christmas, Faisal. That was something that's not in your repertoire of shooting. A little over-the-shoulder hook. And it's a four-point Marquette lead. 
Marquez trying to stop the three-point shot. I'd give the ball down low to, uh, to the Grant either or into Oakley. Nice rebound by Grant. Good foul. Oh, oh, Oakley, what a play. But he pole vaulted. No basket. He obviously pole vaulted. He get away with that in pro, but not in college. But what an athletic move Sam just made. Let's see what the replay shows. Paul Bolton means you put the, the, the offside arm on another guy's shoulder or back and get up high. Now watch. Here's the, here's the replay by Grant. To the hand down low. Call it Paul Bolton. No basket. The foul on Oki. That is his fourth. Fourth foul in the game with five and a half minutes to play. Let, him, let the dice roll now. There's no taking Oakley out now. You need him in there. If you're going to win, you got to root your best ball players, and obviously he's their best. Marquette by four. Bargain having a big second half. Beats Abraham. Here is Crawford posting down low on the right side. He traveled. Good call. Too soon to work the clock. Too much time left. You could work the clock if you had Aaron in there because it was how to run the show. West doesn't have enough experience to run this show near this clip. Hutchins no longer at the end of the bench. He has moved down closer to the coach for what that's worth. Big thing now is to bury yourself into the three-point shooters. It's a possession game. It's a two-possession game at the present time. Crawford overplaying, but the pass by West over the head of a streaking Abraham and out of bounds. Where he made his mistake, and you high school and grade school and college and pro kids out there, when a guy is breaking, a girl's breaking for a basket, you loop the ball to the basket, not to the person. Mark that, that's a tip from the top. To the basket and not to the player. Not to the player, always looping. Again, they got to bury inside the threes here. Oakley should take them. Oakley might have traveled. He did. He traveled on that first step. And in comes the little general. Here he comes. Aaron Hutchins back in. We'll see. The, let's see what happens the first time he handles the ball. That will tell you how bad that shoulder is. I don't like the way he's holding it, but I'm not a doctor. Or I'm not a trainer. It's his left non-shooting shoulder. West now, with the responsibility of dribbling, gets to the foul line, arches up a 12-footer. Marcus West gives Marquette their biggest lead of six. Four minutes to play. Timeout, Wisconsin. It's only a 20-second timeout, so we will keep it here. Right, right now, Dick Bennett is going to a different game set, offensively and defensively. There's the, the shot just made by the kid that played soccer last year for Marquette University. He's a transfer. I remember telling him to, uh, the first practice I went to this year, I remember saying to Dean, Mike Dean, I said, hey, when you put those two small guys out there, you got electricity. I don't know if you can win, but you got electricity. <laughs> It's been brought to our attention by our Cracker Jack statistician, Mike Faulkner, that a moment ago when Oki tipped that ball in left-handed, it was offensive goaltending and not a foul. So he's only got three. The bucket did oh. not count, though, because of the goaltending. Offensive goaltending means this. Circumference of the rim. If the ball is anywhere in there, you can't touch it. In international play, you can but in NBA and collegiate and high school play, you cannot touch the ball while it's inside the circumference of the rim. That was not a good foul that time by Hutch. Or West. It's called on Marcus West, I believe. It will put a Badger up on the foul line to shoot one and one. 3.53 to play. Marquette leading by six. Mike Kosol Sharon has a one and one. The attendance tonight, 15,292. Coastal Sharon calmly hits the first. The big hit. He was a walk-on. He originally was up at Green Bay when uh, Dick Bennett was coaching up there. And when he came down to Madison, he, they didn't have any scholarships. Now he's on full scholarship. There should be pressure if he makes this up court. Let's see if the Badgers put pressure. We've got an official timeout, just under four minutes to play. 
It should be a fantastic finish at the Bradley Center with the Golden Eagles leading by four. Taking a look at the Hardy's hustle board in tonight's game. Marquette out rebounding Wisconsin. We told you rebounding would be one of the keys in the game. You can take a look at the other numbers. Rebounding, as you said, Al, always is a pivotal statistic in any basketball game. Why it's a pivotal statistic is because it's there every night. Every night, night in and night out. It's not something that usually goes up and down. It usually gets a, a, a level and stays there. Okay, the clock's important. Badgers can play real tight. They got two fouls to get before the one and one. West, against the pressure of Oriental, brings it across. Now to Hutchins. Marquette leads by four, three and a half minutes. Hutchins to a wide open bargain for three. Crawford with the rebound. Bargain missed it badly. The rebound is so important because it gives you a fresh clock. The game clock down to 318. Bargain's going all the way. Hooks it up too short. Shaw got a piece of it. Crawford has it. Crawford in traffic. Score! Oh, big time. Big time score there. He gave what we call a mumbo fake. He gave two head and shoulder fakes. Mumbo. A mumbo fake. Mumbo. After 12 o'clock tonight, you do a mumbo. <laughs> Get it to Oakley now. Get it to the man that you want the ball to get two, and that would be Sam Oakley. Doherty misses a three. A leaping West rebound. West has given Marquette some solid minutes tonight. Now you'll see a little bit more aggressiveness to give their two fouls. It's time for Wisconsin to get rid of those two fouls. Because later they want to maybe put someone on the foul line and not stop the clock. Crawford for three. Saved by Shaw but it's off of Shaw and out of bounds. I'm wondering about the decision on that shot. There's a lot of time left in the clock. And I'm not second-guessing somebody because the shot could have went in. 2.20 to play. This is almost a must-score possession for Wisconsin right here. Oh, no, Pat. There's so much time left. <laughs> oh, there's a light year left here <laughs> with three points. Grant's going to go up. And it's blocked by Shaw. West has it. We're under two minutes. Wisconsin's taking a little bit too long to get their last two fouls. There's the first one. That'll give Marquette a fresh 35 with 149 to play. Right. That's a major, major decision that few people know. How did you know? <laughs> and most people don't know that. That's why you should get your fouls close to the six. That's only five on the Badgers. They have to use one more before they can get the ball back, essentially, on a free throw situation. You want to keep the ball in your better foul shooter's hands. Each team has two full timeouts left. The arrow is favoring Wisconsin. Oki slapped it out of the hand of Bargain. The shot clock down to 25. The game clock, 139. Marquette leads by six. Mike Dean's a little bit upset with Bargain that time. Bargain should have moved. Now they should move. There's too much standing around. When you stand around, you can be double teamed. There is the sixth foul on the Badgers. Now the next foul will put Marquette up on the line for one and one. We're talking a two-possession game. When we talk about possession games, that means the other team can either go to overtime or beat you, but they got to have two possessions. Wisconsin to go to overtime needs two three-pointers, so that's two possessions. And they have hit eight three-pointers in the game. Here's Oriental fouling Marcus West, and Marcus has a one-and-one. One. So they lost about 25 seconds trying to get rid of those fouls. It's too much time. Huh? Yeah, it was too much time, but uh, I think what's also happening here because of the thin bench of the Wisconsin with their injuries and so forth, is that uh, I, I think the Wisconsin ball players are tired. Oriental has gone, I think, the full wire to the wire job here, and uh, uh, they're holding on to their pants, which is a sign of being tired. West off the back rim, and the rebound to Sean Doherty. We're under a minute and a half. Marquette leads by six. Dwayne, Dwayne, you gotta, you gotta go for three pointers. Let it fly, Dwayne. You gotta go for three. 
needs to get back in the game. You gotta go for three. You got to go for three. Delaney dribbles out behind the arc. Here's Oki. Good play by Sam. 25-footer, no good, however. The rebound to Shaw, gives it to Hutchins. He's fouled by Coastal Sharon. 105 to play, Coach. It's so important for Hutchins to make this first one because he creates one more possession. Is this, uh, this is too technical. I hate holding clinics, but maybe I'm giving too much technical stuff here. Because all I do as an announcer and have done for the last 20 years, I never had an agent. I jerked around with these networks. They, you know, they think they're playing games with me because I, I don't butter up. I'm not too much guy to butter up. I, I've always been wealthy, so I don't need their money. <laughs> No need to butter then. Oh boy, Hutchins oh boy. Missed the free throw. It's a wild scramble. Dive. West diving out of bounds. It's a Wisconsin ball. We are right at one minute to play. Oh, that's a hustle award. Absolutely a hustle award for both teams. Wisconsin has dodged two or three bullets in the last 35 seconds. They're still in this ball game. What they need is a three-pointer. Marquette will be three-point conscious on defense, you can bet. Hutchins will leave the game. That shoulder is very tender right now. That's not a good sign. That's not a good sign at this time of the game. Dwayne, Dwayne, you got... Yeah, not for Mayor, not for Mayor. Grant oh, boy, what a mistake by Shaw. Even though it looked like leather, don't block the shot. Let him have it. It still makes it a two-possession game. You get the ball. He reaches in now. Now you're in the position where if he makes the first shot and misses the second and they get the ball, you got some, you got some major problems. Grant is three out of four from the line tonight. Don't forget now the clock is a little bit over 48 seconds. First one is big time. He has to make this first one. It's still a six-point Marquette lead. Didn't get up off his uh, heels that time, but I don't want to tell him. Leave him alone. The Patchers with only 19 points in the second half. Now they have 20. It's still a two-possession lead. 48 seconds to play. Marquette by five. We'll be back in a flash. in the paint and we will do so in just a moment Marquette leads by five Wisconsin and Marquette the rebound situation and the block shots in the paint brought to you by Old Milwaukee America's best tasting beer now Marquette has the ball Al with 48 seconds to play what's the game plan here right now Wisconsin will put full court pressure they don't they won't commit a foul early but they'll commit a foul if they get over half court Bargain wisely calls a timeout. He was getting dangerously close to the five-second mark, which would have been a violation. Well, what happens now, they, they want you to call the timeout before four seconds. So, uh, and there was, a, there was not a score, so they couldn't run, run the baseline to feed the ball in. What happens now, what Dick Bennett's doing now, he's saying who to foul out there. Who is the weakest foul shooter? So they'll try to get the ball into the weaker foul shooter's hands. Uh, Bargain surprisingly should be a good foul shoot. He shoots 55%. Now the opposite side, Pat, Marquette wants the ball in West's hands. Marcus West, he's playing point guard now because Aaron Hutchins is hurt. He shoots 91%. Crawford shoots 83%. So that's the first thing. The second thing you, you want to get over to these guys is that if we score, call an immediately timeout to stop the clock. Let's say Wisconsin turns the ball over. There's still even a two-possession game because it's a five-point spread. So you want to get it down to a one-possession game. Let me ask you this, Coach. Does Wisconsin foul Marquette right away, or do they try for a steal for a few seconds? Uh, they, they try for a steal for a few seconds up court, but they will foul. If you get them over half court, they got to foul right away because the true opponent then becomes the clock and not the, and not the Marquette Golden Eagle. Marquette's going to try to play keep away? Uh, oh, yes. They, they'll, they'll, uh, once they get over, they'll spread out over, say, Dean Smith's old fourth corner and keep movement going. But the... Um, uh, there's plenty of time left in this ballgame. 
48 seconds to play. Each team, by the way, with only one timeout remaining. There seems to be a little bit of confusion over by the scorer's table. Mike Dean is talking with Ted Hillary, one of the officials. The situation seems to be rectified. And we are ready to go. Under a minute, 48 seconds to play. Marquette by five. Marquette with the ball. Mike Bargain to make the inbound pass. Now they got Aaron Hutchins back in there. So Aaron, Aaron Hutchins will fake and get himself free in the side. Now they're foul. Wisconsin should foul now. They Here's got a foul West. right away. They got a foul right away. West is foul. Well coached. Uh, Dick Bennett's an outstanding coach. Mike Dean's an outstanding coach, so I don't want to say an Irish left-handed compliment. But Dick Bennett, he, he holds a clinic every time he coaches the ball. Mike Dean trying to get to 30 games over 500 in his third year. They were 23 and 8 a year ago, 21 and 12 in his first season. And now Marcus West, who missed a free throw a minute ago. Two for three in the game is on the line. It's a five-point Marquette lead. Abraham comes in for defense. I don't like the way Hutchins is holding his left arm. Watch. See the way he's holding his left oh, arm? Yeah. I don't like that. Now he, I hope he won't be out for a while. It looks to me like that's a problem. West has one and one. That's the ninth team foul on the Badgers. Ooh, come out. Shaw had a piece of it, but it's out of bounds. Wisconsin West. still alive, Al. West is dejected. Don't be dejected. That shot's over. 41 seconds to play. I wouldn't foul. I wouldn't foul. I let the clock come in a little bit more. Clock come in a little bit more. Just don't give him the three-point shot. Wisconsin down by five. Oki to Coastal Sharon. He almost traveled. Coastal Sharon puts up a shot that's almost an air ball. It's out of bounds off of the Golden Eagles. Wisconsin maintains possession. What's 23 seconds left. What's happening here, Marquette's overplaying everybody where Feistel Abraham's playing a one-man zone to need. See the one-man zone there? He's protecting the paint. Oki off the rim. Crawford has it. Get 15 it seconds to play. Get it to West. That should do it. No, Down to 10 seconds. And a foul on the play on Sean Doherty with 10 seconds to play. Marquette leads by five, and they're on the line to shoot two now. It's not a one-and-one. One. Now it's a two-pointer. Now, now it's a bonus, which makes it so much easier to make that first one. Well, I hope everybody had a good 96. The 97 is going to be out of sight. It's going to be above the trees. It's going to be a beach. It's going to be a treehouse. Seashells, balloons, 97. Ooh, are you going to have a big year? <laughs> As West makes the first... Lots of players have contributed for Marquette tonight. He's got a couple. It's a seven-point lead with 10 seconds to play. You don't want to foul here. Dwayne Dwayne in the backcourt. Down to five seconds. Oki has it stolen by Bargain. It's all over. The Marquette Golden Eagles defeated the Wisconsin Badgers by a score of 59 to 52 here at the Bradley Center. Quite a ball game tonight at the fabulous Bradley Center and we will come back to talk a little bit about it and perhaps take a look at some of the final numbers. Marquette prevails by seven.